Hello and welcome back to the Crypto Chronicle podcast. Uh, we are here on the 5th of March, Taylor. Yes. And Bitcoin sits at... Oh, drum roll. Drum roll, please. $68,233. USD, of course. Actually, sorry, it just lagged. $68,352. Oh, can we watch? And for our... <laughs> we might as well just spend the whole uh, we podcast just, just, just like watching, watching live streaming. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is a nice little... Oh, look at that. Look, 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 sugar liquidation, liquidation. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just actually start a new podcast. It's just live commentary of the Bitcoin chart in a bull market. I feel like people would watch that. I reckon we should, like 24-7. Oh, yeah. 24-7 live, which is just shifts. Yeah, <laughs> literally just like, yeah, 12-hour shift, yeah. I'll and so you. I've taken you through the late night, <laughs> which is starting now. <laughs> and on your way to work, we've got... <laughs> I'm trying to look up... Let's look up the Bitcoin price in AUD, because that matters to us. Oh, uh, well, it'd be about 106... You reckon? Yeah, almost 107. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, it is. It's 105. 105, 105. Okay. 104,900, but yeah. it did spike to as much as, yeah, 105. Well, I'm on the Kraken exchange. Yeah, yeah. 105,500, 400 or so. But Mate, you got to yes. do it on an AUD exchange where, like, they're buying and putting a market. True. Up. Come on, come on. That's the highest price possible. BTC, highest price. AUD. It doesn't, weirdly on trading view, it doesn't. Like nah. obviously, yeah, they don't I have like do coin stash and you just yeah. do Google BTC to AUD and it's always yeah. really high. Yeah, there literally isn't one Australian exchange on trading view. I might well, I no. suppose there's probably not enough liquidity and volume yeah. to really justify. But anyways, I've seen worse things on trading view. But yeah. Uh, to recap everything, we've we've obviously been having podcast after podcast. We've been mm. quite bullish, you and I, on the prospects of Bitcoin, and here we are. I think last week we said, you know, we expect continuation now to all time highs, and here we are. I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know what? I did forget to do. I forgot to find out who. I, actually, no. Was that competition last week closer to the pin for the halving? No. Was it closest to the pin? No, it was closer to what we were going to be this week. Okay, and it I was. I think nobody was right. <laughs> I don't think everyone anybody, was saying in the 50s or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, even I was, like, 59. <laughs> yeah. like, and, everyone, and I was, like, I remember thinking, oh, that's really high. What am I doing? <laughs> so I think everyone everyone expected a bit more of a pause, but we only really got three or four days at most of, of tinkering, and then it's just gone bang. Yeah. Blink and you miss it type of stuff because, I mean, like, the obvious insinuation, and it's been a topic on here for a long time, is alts. And, like, yeah. like you literally haven't seen alts really move, have you? No. Like Bitcoin's pumped $25,000, well, $20,000 since a couple of weeks ago. So, well, it was literally like I saw a meme this morning and it was like Solana and it's like that stick figure, like, come on, do something. And it's literally because, like, what Solana's been 120, 130 for like a month and a half now and Bitcoin's mm. almost doubled yeah. and it hasn't moved. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So Rick had 60,357. I feel Ooh, like that might go. That close. would be the Even biggest, I reckon. 8,000 off Rick. I think, yeah. I think you should still be closest. On closest front. to the pin. He, he gets the 10 bucks. Yeah. Uh, Michael had 52,000. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, uh, Michael. No good. Yeah, no. Unfortunately. Andrew, <laughs> you said 49,000. Oh, Andrew, shame on you. FTM has gone close here. FTM Ooh. said 76,000. So that's about 8,000. These, they're the literally, you'll have to, that's a split hair there. Yeah, I'll have to take a look, but it's between FTM and um. Mate, and FTM's uh, Both day trading course members. FTM's probably on the on the buck for if he wants to say that for next week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he'll be very happy given how FTM's been going. Exactly right. Anyways, let's get into the bulk of it. Obviously, we've got some fundamental news. Actually, to be honest, given how knee deep I've been in the charts mm. and everything else. I haven't been able to write too much news this last week, but there has been some. Um, so this morning, the main one was BlackRock's F ETF got delayed, of course. Yeah, We've spoken we about know. this. It's all just the same shit. So I think Vanguard's... Um, so the final deadline for the first one that has to be accepted is Vanguard's. Mm. So similarly similarly to the BTC one, as we saw in December, November, they were delaying it, delaying it because they all yeah. just want to accept them all at one time. Yeah. So they've delayed BlackRock's to the exact date. They have to make a decision on Vanguard's. Right. The same will happen with Kathy Wood's one. And then mm. so that date is May, there's something, not sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as I said, don't worry. I was actually in a Discord message and I saw someone saying, you know, oh, come on, let's short. Oh, this is the perfect entry for F what? ETF getting uh, denied. Let's do a short. And I said, it's 100% priced in this news. What? So don't try and do that. Right, It's front running hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> I see, yeah. Well, as we said, um, as we've spoken about, which has been kind of an alpha tip of ours over recent weeks, is you're not seeing F yet. You're, you are seeing, like, I mean, it's gone from $2,000 mm. to $3,500, $3,600 in the last few weeks. But I feel like there's going to be a similar playbook for the F ETF. I think large 
traders and whales would be ignorant to not accumulate a lot of it prior Surely. to an ETF decision. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you're a big F fan, um, there's a lot to look forward to, I think, because once Bitcoin does make all-time highs, which could be in the next five minutes, it could be in the next five days, it could be at the halving, I think we'll make it in the next day or two. But uh, usually what comes after Bitcoin does... Well, there's either one or two things that happens here for those traders out there or for anyone that's uneasy with the all-time high on Bitcoin. There's currently, uh, we've kind of skipped to the technical analysis part here. Like we've, we've, we've fast forwarded uh, I just want to quickly explain blah, blah, something blah, blah, blah. because there's no prior historical mm -mm. pricing to go off once you're in price discovery uh, to get directional bias to point you in the right direction. Like there's literally nothing. We either fake out and dump or we continue upwards, don't we? Or we make a new all-time high and we consolidate. So I think for the, all of those holding alts, or if you're big on F, what you want to see on this breakout is either just market continuation where mm. Bitcoin continues to break out, alts are slowly chasing, but blah, blah. Or we want to see us break out and then consolidate or kind of trade even a little bit down. So let's say we break out at 75K and we consolidate between, let's just call it the previous all-time high in 75K. And that's when all the money mm. gets moved from Bitcoin to alts and liquidity starts to go there. And then you might see Bitcoin dominance begin to come down a lot and then mm. et cetera, et cetera. So usually that happens post-halving with an alt season um, in terms of that Bitcoin dominance yeah. and that consolidation and Still whatnot because that halving gives that big rush and then there's that consolidation and then sell off. And then, mm. um, so yeah, it's all very interesting at the moment but it's interesting that we've going to like all-time high and btc d is still not mm. like yeah. where it was well like, yeah, yeah yeah so yeah well it, it, it was a lot different in prior, prior cycles there obviously wasn't mm. as many alts wasn't as many major alts yeah uh but yeah i will put a chart i am probably put it in last week or in prior yeah. weeks but 56 to 58 percent is my goal on uh well, like 44 44 and a half no 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 54 and a half oh, it is, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. so it's only got another two to two to three percent which is a lot so mm. put it in context we pumped from 60 let's call it 61 60 000 to 69,000 yeah. in that week and it's gone up two to three percent so yeah. another two to three percent let's just say it's to eighty thousand bitcoins it's very, it keeps coming down yeah it's it's well like, it keeps yeah. <laughs> it's so hard this market mm. because a lot of the time you can time your bitcoin longs or your alt longs or whatever it is based on bitcoin dominance but what's happening is like for instance the other day well, on the monday towards the daily close when it closed we had pumped bitcoin dominance across that Prior day, 11 a.m. to the next day, 11 a.m., 1.3% uh, or something. Mm. By the time it was 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so three hours post daily close, Bitcoin dominance was down one point. Percent, so it yeah. spent the whole day crushing alts and like slowly pumping Bitcoin. And <laughs> Bitcoin just did nothing and alts just caught up. So it's a bit hard to trade at the moment. Um, but I yeah. think if you are looking for an end high target, I think that 56 to 58% level makes sense to you because it represents... Uh, the 50% fib that comes from the old, not all time high, the last pivot high on dominance down to its very low. And it also represents, I think, 20, 20, 21 lows. So technically it makes sense. Uh, it's just something to me that when you mix it in with the fundamentals of the halving and the timing, yeah. it makes sense that we'd go from 53, 54%, that final push after the demand and supply shock. Yeah. And then people in April and May when the FETF ETF starting to get approved and people, uh, retail's FOMOing in, retail yeah. aren't FOMOing into Bitcoin. Nah. They're chasing your Fs, your Solanas, your dog mm. with hats. and <laughs> Because unfortunately for them in their mind, even though they make the wrong investing decision, is they go, I can't put $100, I can't put $1,000 into Bitcoin and make money. Even yeah. if it was to double, they just, it's people don't understand 100% yeah. return is better than any investors on planet yeah. Earth. But people get sucked in by the idea of crypto and they're used to seeing people make 1,000x gains and then... That's what they chase and they yeah. end up losing all their money or they round trip those type of coins or they get rugged and, and blah, blah, blah. But so we need retail as much as we Yeah, yeah we do. Them. But we it's a, that's the most interesting thing about this market is that yeah, yet to come. I mm. was discussing with you guys this morning. I think I've had two friends text me. Um, one of them was curious to get back in, but he already held stuff. And the other one was just texting me to thank me because he's like, oh, dude, <laughs> like... What the hell? Like, I opened my Binance account when you came over to my house a year ago and everything is 4X. Do you have any more? <laughs> Do you know what the irony? I actually messaged a mate of mine on the weekend that I spoke to maybe about 12 months ago and, like, he was like, oh, should I get Bitcoin? Right, right. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, absolutely. Like, he's a pretty conservative guy. I was like, yeah, yeah. Bitcoin and ETH probably the best ones to get. Mm -hmm. I messaged me the other day being like, mate, it's been a few months since we've had a chat. I hope, I hope you're doing all right. Like, obviously, yeah. you'd be pretty happy with Bitcoin. He's like, oh, I sold it. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. So, yeah, poor old Nick. <laughs> That's why you need someone to help you out in the right direction like our services do. Exactly right. But 
we'll continue on with the news as we got a bit sidetracked there. Um, I will, just whilst we are talking very bullishly on Bitcoin's price, is that when we have done this pumping last few days, uh, well, actually late last week on the Thursday or Friday, we put in another record of $7.7 .7 billion traded, uh, which smashed the record. Um, sorry about my phone. That is alarms going off on Tia. Um, I don't want to trade Tia right now. I'm very over Tia. Uh, what is the Bitcoin <laughs> price anyway? I haven't checked it. Yeah, live check, live 68, check. 68,300, 68,300, over, over. Um, Still there, beautiful. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, they smashed more records. I think today in this huge pump, they did five point something, which was the second largest again. So uh, it's funny, you know, we're doing a couple hundred millions the first few weeks and we're going, this is crazy, but uh, damn, the 600 mil per day volume's going to die. And then it's like, oh, we do 6 billion in a day in March. And it's like, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not dying. I just can't <laughs> wait to what it's going to be in May. Yeah. Like. Mm. It'll be interesting. It'll be, it'll, and I guess it's going to be an interesting flow on from like the when ETH gets uh, approved. Yeah. Where the breakup is. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it's why it's so hard to A, fade ETH in the future yeah, and yeah. why it's so hard. Because I understand from most traders, even your friend that sold and everyone is in price cycles right now is the right time to sell or was <laughs> a few weeks ago. It was. It was. Yeah. Um, but you can't fade this ETF narrative because like, for instance, there's no, if you see a statistic that says Bitcoin ETFs break records with 7.7 .7 billion volume in demand, and on that very same day, you see Bitcoin rally ten, over 10% 10 from 60,000 to 64,000, there's clearly a pretty strong correlation. Um, that didn't exist in prior cycles. Yep. So, yeah, in prior cycles, me and Taylor waking up, your mum, your sister, actually probably not them, they're probably not interested in crypto, but <laughs> all the dangers out there will wake up, they'll go on their Coinbase app, they'll buy Bitcoin, they're a couple hundred bucks. This yeah. is a lot different to Larry Fink max bidding every single day mm. and them accumulating over 10 billion worth of Bitcoin themselves. Yeah. So that's how much they've bought on the open market and will continue to buy until it runs out. So Max I don't Capital, think it, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is Max Capital, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, to put it lightly, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. And, you know, maybe when it does, we cool off for a bit. But it's hard for me to say right now. Well, I've said it multiple times on the podcast. It's so hard to be bearish. So if you mm. are bearish. No, well I, don't, I don't clap for that because they're idiots. <laughs> they're brave, at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Carrying on to a little bit of uh, silly news somewhat. But the US government transferred $922 million worth of Bitcoin they seized during the Bitfinex hacking incident. Um, you know what's like the most hilarious thing is the Democratic uh, Democratic Party of America and blah, blah, blah. The government trying to shut down crypto. Um, they're one of the largest holders of Bitcoin, as we've spoken about mm. in the past. Um, so they saw 60K and said, let's cash in, I think. But um, yeah, they literally just had funds they seized from the Bitfinex hacking. And I think it was 120,000 Bitcoins are worth over 7.4 billion. Wonder if they'll see uh, any any taxpayers get a lower bill. <laughs> yeah, it. well, it is the funny thing, isn't it? Mm. Well, no, they'll just put in inflation on them as usual, and mm. uh, our way out is Bitcoin. I wonder if they got taxed. Uh, is that why they waited so long to sell them? Try and get a lower tax bracket? Maybe. Probably. Bullshit. They would never get it. <laughs> All righty. Uh, on a quick brief mining uh, update in the US, there was a bit of weird stuff going on with the US Department of Energy. Mm. Uh, taking data from mining companies and really putting, you know, their coercive force across it. But in an agreement with the Texas Blockchain Council and Riot, who are one of the biggest mining companies in the world, um, they've halted a proposed nationwide emergency survey, you know, targeting these miners and picking up data from all of them, what they do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that'll be fine. Um, it's good to always read that we're somewhat defeating that coercive <laughs> nature of the US yeah. government. Um, the US has always been a bit like that. Yeah. All right, one more thing as well is for those FTX users, I did an article on this a while ago. I think we might have talked about it on the podcast, but, you know, it is being confirmed and it is con causing major concern that this claim window that FTX are doing for all their major cryptocurrencies is at the prices of the end of 2022. So... Their pricing for you getting your Bitcoin back, if you're getting Bitcoin back from FTS, is $16,871. It's your, awfully bloody rude. Your ETH is $1,258. Oh. $16 for Sol, <laughs> $286 for BNB. Obviously, 
Who's making the money? Those are much, much, much uh, huh? Who's make? Where does the other half of it go? I don't know. I don't Do you know, know what I mean? Like, come on. I think it was lost, to yeah, be honest. Well, but no, they they recovered like a fair, fair, decent. Yeah. Like now, surely now they've got to have everyone's money. Well, I think this is the issue, right? And why this is why this is causing concern is, mm. is the fairness and transparency of this isn't isn't right. So, PwC. Um, have responded saying, you know, FTX is undergoing a Chapter 11 settlement, so it is what it is, and the, the liquidator instructs the creditors to do it, and yeah, so no, it'll no. be interesting to see what comes of it, but... That's outrageous. Um, this is why... Price check, price check. Let's everyone F has broke 3,700. Wow. Ooh, live breaking, breaking. Uh, F is, like, seriously pumping. Wow. Well, there you go. F is uh, at its yearly high. F is at... Oh, wow. Yeah, that is seriously pumping. Yearly high? Yeah, yearly high. Just put in a new high. <laughs> I'll do it for F. I'll do it for F yeah. as well. And Bitcoin's making its way back up as well. Oh, but fabulous. Yes, yes, yes. Are we going to start to... Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm. No, okay. okay. One last thing I want to talk about in Bitcoin, which relates to this demand and supply squeeze of the halving of the ETF demand, is mm. that daily Bitcoin withdrawals have surged record levels as 2 billion left exchanges. Um, so that was record high. So crypto slate analyst James Van Stratton uh, pretty much noticed that on March the 1st, 2 billion left exchanges, which is a record. So, you know, this is despite, you know, mainstream investors, as we're talking about mm. retail, aren't uh, fully entering the crypto space. And they're, we're already seeing all this Bitcoin getting taken off exchanges. It's going to be interesting once they all flock, download that Coinbase app. Coinbase becomes the number one app. And <laughs> maybe there won't be that much Bitcoin for everyone to, to buy. But it's interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm. And uh, Glassnode reported that the lowest BTC asset since March 2018. So it's the lowest that I think Coinbase have had Bitcoin assets on their thing. Wow. So pretty amazing. But Yeah, it's not like we haven't been telling anyone it's going to come though. <laughs> like as wow. much as it's like, oh my God, that's just nuts. It's like, <laughs> you know. Well, as I, I, as I wrote, funnily enough, in, well, actually last week's Bitcoin price, I remember exactly what it was, was because it was 56500 or something, mm. because I went and looked at the very first Chronicle we did, maybe not podcast, because we started the podcast a bit after the Chronicle. Yeah. I went and looked at my first written Chronicle, and the first written Chronicle I did was in June or July of last year, and Bitcoin was $27,000. So yeah. if you had followed the Chronicle all the way through, all the high time frame bullish market structure charts, the log charts of me saying, I expect us to go higher, blah, blah, blah. We are investing in the trading academy. We are longing in the day trading academy. You probably would have made some money because as of last week, when I posted our Chronicle, it had doubled. That, that was the official doubling of 27,000. Mm. So um, well done to those listeners that have. Look, I'm just going to say like next year, we're probably going to have to move the podcast because I'll be playing golf <laughs> on Tuesdays. So then I'll be only working maybe like a bit, an hour or two every week. We, we might have to. Uh, well, yeah, I, I was planning on telling Will and Cal I'm quitting today. but mm, uh, Bitcoin's all time. As yeah. I said, Fet, when is it $2? I'm taking the day off. <laughs> and Fet will be at $2 soon, by the way. Oh, but on to the Trading Academy members yeah. and bought that at 18 cents. If you stuck fat, mm. you'd be exactly. looked after. Um, all righty. Well... I will go back to a bit of TA, but there really isn't much to say other than last week we were talking about, well, last week and the week before we were talking about the 786 and the high volume area and how we might potentially reject and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I was pretty confident that if we would go past it, then we're at all time high because there's mm. absolutely no resistance. Mm. And that's why for those that don't understand technical analysis is just prior at 57K, there was high volume area and the very last pretty much weekly, daily, monthly resistance before the all-time high because the all-time high got put in there very quickly, kind of. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's not much resistance in there because it just free fell. Yeah. Um, if you want to explain in your own head, like how the hell did we pump from 60 just to 69 so quickly? That is why, because there was literally like the way to explain the market dynamics is there's not that much demand and supply in that area because yeah. it's just like... Anyways, but that is exactly why. So... Um, as a result, we've made all-time highs. As I kind of said before, um, I can't give you predictions on what's going to happen in price discovery because Crystal I don't ball, have any... T- Crystal ball, bring <laughs> well, it up. Well, as I said, I mentioned three scenarios. I'll say that's a scenario I want to see the most, mm. not the one I think will happen, but I want to see a pump well past ATS. I think a fake out would absolutely shake this market. Like oh, people yeah. would just like... Panic. We'd get, oh, we get a 20 to 30% dump on alts because yeah. everyone would panic sell alts if Bitcoin failed to make new all-time highs. Um, it's just how the market goes. Everyone yeah. is stupid, unfortunately, in this world. Mm. Um, so I would like to see us, you know, at least press, let's call it to 80,000, 80, 70, 80,000. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
and I want to see us consolidate there and let alts play a bit of catch up because I have a bad feeling that if Bitcoin just continues to run, it's going to run. And like, like I mean, run and like, alts aren't going to get any love. So My team is smiling. Yeah, <laughs> like, and then that's and then that stage, I think dominance can go higher than fifty seven percent. So, um, yeah, it's all a bit hard to interpret, but that's what I would look for. One comment I will make is I think in twenty twenty one. 2020 whenever we breached the prior bear market so mm. bull market all-time high of twenty thousand dollars or whatever it was um i think it took three weeks or something to reach that high of sixty five thousand. Mm. so bitcoin tripled in value once it <laughs> went past its all-time high in a couple of weeks once it did oh yeah um, par- so par- I'm just work, yeah. trying to paint the picture of why it's kind of hard <laughs> to predict what price will stop at because the last time we went past all-time high, we tripled in price in a couple of weeks. So, um, And then we lost the same amount about two months later, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we pumped. So it might have not been a few weeks. It might have been a couple of months, but we still tripled in price and it went 65 down 30 yeah. back to 69. Um, that's a conversation for another time though because a lot of people were led to believe that that bu- 69 was kind of like the bubble top at 65 that 64 65 was the real top of the cycle mm-hmm. and then like yeah it paid the bear market but we just got a huge bubble bear market rally pump in the thing and then we yeah. resumed the bear market that fits in more i think cyclically with the cycles but um <clears throat> yeah in any case uh what i will do in the chronicle as opposed to trying to predict where we'll end up is i'll place some support levels that maybe a few of you are looking to get involved at um, right now, the data is very bullish, or it was at least until we did this huge squ- short squeeze. Um, but I think there's a chance. The only reason I'm going to say there's a huge chance for major sell-offs is because of the open interest yeah. and leverage I mentioned before. Historically, as I said, we can't go off based off price action, but historically we can go off what happens when open interest is at all-time highs, mm. and there's always a flush, usually more often than not. Um, that is because in bull markets, everyone over-leverages themselves and just holds and says, I'm going to become a millionaire, and market makers go, ha, oh, that's funny, mm. give us your money, and then the exchanges <laughs> take it all, and then you're left with nothing. So I think if, you, if you're in spot, do not panic, do not... G, do not sell. If you see 20, 30% pullback, please do not do that. Uh, I will say if you are on Levy Show, instill the right risk management and ensure that you are doing things the correct way because you might go to sleep tonight. And and I'm not saying 20 to 30% correction and then it's just like, like we could get a 10, 20% dump and we're back where we are. Yeah, exactly. And you've yeah. been kicked out of all your positions and now you're back where we are now and you've got nothing. Yeah. So play it smart. Don't over leverage yourself. Uh, expect those type of pullbacks. And like we saw on Monday, like I was in the office on Monday and I'm like, oh my God, we're at 64,500. In a five minute candle, we went to 62,000. Yeah. And so many people would have built up positions, 62,000, 63,000, longing holds, blah, blah, gone, I can't believe I've caught the pump. Like we've gone from 60,000 to 63,000 and then gone to 64, oh yeah, I'm not TPing. Gone to take a piss, come back, and they've been wiped from all their positions in a five minute candle. So. Yeah. Um, there's always the potential for that, even in raging bull markets. That'll be my comment. Um, so I'll oh, place that'll happen way more. In ra- it, once we break up, yeah, oh, that'll be vicious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talking, I reckon, like as soon as it goes parabolic, you could have like a four to five k candle in yeah. the space of an hour. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. Easily. Yeah. Um, so uh, in saying that, back to what I was saying, I'll place some support levels both locally and high time frame. I still believe the SR flip of kind of that last monthly high. And the 786 between 57 to 59,000 absolutely has to hold or it kind of gets bearish mm. because it's kind of saying that, you know, we failed to break all-time highs. Yep. We then went to the next support level that was resistance and we failed to hold that as support now. So, you know, the next level is kind of 48, 50K. But in any case, I'll place all of those there. Um, you can plan, set your alarms around that. If we do see a downswing, which I don't think will happen, mind you, but um, as a trader and investor, you always have to plan for downside because if you don't, it happens, then you've got no plan, right? And mm. you're going to be left sitting on your hands and you're going to panic. And it's probably why most people sell because they don't have a, a plan to buy, Yeah, I've literally, which is yeah. what you do on blood days in a bull market. Any pullback you get in a bull market that's is why blessing. I'm holding cash yeah. ready to buy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, so yeah. you buy dips, buy dips in a bull market. So yeah. that's all I'll say. Um, I'll get that out. The minor market? Oh, look, to be honest, mate, everything's hot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty pretty fair market at the moment. Everything's looking pretty good. I think I think the only thing that's worth looking at is, is like, a lot of people obviously faltering a little bit with Harbin coming up and looking to sort of wait and see. Mistake. Go yeah. for it. Yeah. Go for a T21. Get yeah. something online that's performing well. Even something like that's making seven, eight bucks a day post halving at today's price. Yeah. One comment I will make on that is, like, it's the same thing as, like, kind of what I was saying before. Like, it's the same as trading, isn't it? Yeah. Like, don't sit on yeah. your hands. Don't. Yeah. 
FOMO in afterwards when it's become worse. Waiting until the halving is going to be the worst thing. As much as you might be like, oh, machine prices might drop 10%, they're not going to. And the it's also a different market as yeah. well. So like yeah. you, you can't look at the prior halvings and go, this happened with the market because Bitcoin's price is at all-time highs prior to the halving this time. It didn't happen last week. Last month. halving, it was so quiet. Yeah. yeah. This is so busy, it's not funny. Yeah. So exactly. no, it's, it's polar opposites that we're actually talking about this morning. So, yeah. yeah. And it's just price, isn't it? Price yeah. leads everything. So yep. And hash rate. Yeah. Yep. So as long as Bitcoin continues to pump alongside hash rate, like the machines, you, yep. you're just seeing difficulty up drops. Up. So, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. worthwhile looking into it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Easy done. Does that wrap us up? We yeah. will conclude with what Bitcoin's price magically is. Uh, did Earth remain? Yes. Wow. Earth is seriously pumping. 33,740. Beautiful. And we're getting okay. We're getting an alt pump here. <laughs> so you know how mm. no, you know how Bitcoin dominance was up one. I said it was. I said to someone this morning. I thought that was the biggest daily candle I'd seen on Bitcoin dominance in a long time. It's two percent now. Since eleven a.m., we're down 09 percent. So almost one percent. So almost Reverse. half of yeah, all wow. of yesterday's yeah, dominance. Wow. And that's very obvious where it's coming through. It's an yeah. F. So. Yeah. I was looking at F before when Bitcoin was priced at 68,000, which it is now, yeah. and it was priced at, you know, 3,630 yeah, or something. When we came in here, I was yeah. looking at it, yeah. And now it's $100 higher and Bitcoin's the same price. So you can see where the market share is now going. No. Um, but, you know, it comes exactly what we are talking about before, though. This might be a lot of whales saying, I'm not going to let F's price get away from me. Bitcoin no. breaks all-time highs. I need to be on the right side of it now. So when it gets approved at the yeah. ETF, we're there. Mm. Alrighty, um, this is awesome. We're almost there. Um, hopefully, by next week's podcast, we are at all time highs and we're celebrating eighty thousand USD. Why don't we? We'll do. We'll do one more comp. The price of Bitcoin that it tops at after it breaks out on the first pullback on that, Ooh, if there is one. I like that. So to make that a and bit more simple, let's let's call it let's call it the first five percent five percent fair five percent pullback. If we might not even get one, but Nah, just let, let's let's make it simple. So the correct price prior uh, prior to the pullback, if, even if it's five, ten, twenty percent, doesn't matter. You you can figure can, out what you want. Yeah, I can be the judge. Um, and a stab at the date. Yeah, stab at the date and stab at the price. Of yeah, what we will top out before our first pullback, and I'll juice this one up. We get twenty USD. Oh, to the winner. That, yeah. Totally. yeah, I'm totally. a generous guy. Wow. Right, we're really in a bull market now. Oh, yeah. I'm raising from 10 oh, to 20 geez, years. Everyone, look out. So, right, yeah, everyone. as always, post in the general yeah. chat and tag everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Literally just tag everyone. <laughs> yeah, just do that. Everyone in the Discord. <laughs> Get everyone around it. Let's yeah. see what you can do. Awesome, guys. Alrighty, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. See you next week, guys.